This is a Bandit Radio production. Long enough to cover the subject and short enough to keep it interesting. Welcome to Outta My League, presented by Bandit Radio. I'm Nick Diaz. So today I want to talk to you all about how things are kind of changing. They're changing in sports. Now, when people hear change, sometimes they go, well, yeah, I don't like change. Now, I'm not one of those people that say change is always bad. However, I also like to say that change is not necessarily always good. It, it, there's no absolutes. But changes are happening in sports, and I think this is for the better. I think people can also misunderstand changes as something bad when it's in reality something good, and vice versa. And the change that's happening is in coaching. Specifically, how you coach. So, Coach Ed Ogeron had a press conference yesterday with his new offensive coordinator and passing game coordinator. And he also took some questions about who his new defensive coordinator will be. About what he's looking for, qualities, traits. And if you listened carefully, you heard something obvious. Coach O is rebuilding something. Something new. And if you listen, just listen to what he says. Here's Coach O being asked about what he's looking for in his new coordinator candidates. When I look at uh, a candidate, I want to see how the players are going to feel. Number one, is he going to be able to connect our players? I think think that's one of the most important things as a coach. And, And I want to protect our players, and I want a coach that's going to love them, but is also going to get them better. Did you hear it? Did you? Somewhere along the line, in the history of coaching, somewhere along the line, coaching changed from it's my way or the highway to let's find the best way we can do this together. A lot of people say these players today are, oh, they're too soft. You can't yell at them. You can't hurt their feelings. Look, I, I want to ex- you know explain something to you right now. I am someone who finds it really annoying when the media gets on a coach for yelling at a player on the sidelines. I have no problem with yelling, or cursing for that matter. And I've never believed that, because hey, look at Nick Saban. I mean, he he still yells and curses at his players, and he's still pretty successful, and they love him. But Nick Saban said something multiple times over the years about how he's been able to su- sustain success with different players. And he says, you know, with these generation of players, you can't just tell them what to do, you also have to explain why they're doing something. You have to really connect with them. My way or the highway doesn't work. So here is new offensive coordinator for LSU, Jake Peets, on what his goals are for the next couple of weeks with players and how he's going to install the offense. Here's what he said. We can't ask these guys to go do these things. We can't be demanding of them in a positive way and really challenge them unless they feel that we believe in them. But getting face-to-face with these guys, not even talking football, like that that's not even the concern right now. I, these guys can play football. They're here, right? So, But it's about learning these people. It's about them learning me, learning DJ. You know, talking about, like, I, my wife Maggie, this, none of this is possible without her. And I have six wonderful kids I can't wait to see this weekend. Uh, but I want them to know about my family. You know, they can't be family if they don't feel comfortable coming over to my house or if I'm not bringing my family around them. Because when we build that, then we're going to be able to get into the football. Did you hear it again? I want them to meet my family and be able to come over to my house and feel comfortable. Not X's and O's. That's his first goal. There are some studies out there that kids are smarter or maybe wiser now than they were 50 or 60 years ago with because of technology. I don't know if all of that's true. I can't speak to that. But I will say, as a young person, because I'm 26, I am I'm kind of a millennial or a Gen Z, somewhere in the middle, that young people today, their logic when it comes to authority or when it comes to coaching is, well, if someone I don't really know, some adult that just goes up to me and says, my way or the highway, shut up and listen. I'm not going to listen to them. Why would I listen to someone who doesn't care about me, who doesn't listen to me and doesn't know me or I don't know them? I mean, that just doesn't make any sense. Oh, well, these kids are just, they're just entitled. You can't make them tough anymore. Interesting that kids today are different or coaching is different. Do y'all know who Morgan Wooten is? You ever heard the name Morgan Wooten? 
He's considered the greatest high school basketball coach of all time at DeMatha Catholic in Washington, D.C. He's in the Hall of Fame. Not the Washington, D.C. High School Basketball Hall of Fame, like the Naismith Memorial Hall of Fame. He was inducted in 2000 for coaching high school basketball. He coached from the 1956 season all the way to 2002. John Wooden, the UCLA coach who won 10 national championships, was once asked, who's the greatest coach in the world? And he said, Morgan Wooten, DeMatha Catholic High School. So this guy's pretty important. Well, Wooten was asked, well, how did you have so much success after all these years? He was on 60 Minutes, and uh, he was asked that question. And Wooten said, well, I never yelled or cursed at my players. And they were like, really? Like, why? Like, this was, you know, this guy was coaching in the 50s and 60s and 70s and 80s and winning, you know, national high school championships. And he said, well, as an adult, do you want to go to work and have your boss yell and scream at you and throw stuff at you and curse at you? And they were like, yeah, but they're adults. You know, no, no, no. Okay. They're adults. So you expect a 17, 16, 15-year-old boy to understand that? If you can't do it to adults in a workplace environment, why would you do it to young kids? Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? It's not so much that players are getting smarter for me. Coaches are getting smarter. I've always said the, the toughest coach I ever had was the coach who never yelled or screamed at me once, yet he made me tougher, mentally, physically tougher, taught to ignore pain more than any other coach I ever had, but never once yelled or cursed at me. Never once. But this is interesting because you know what the problem you saw on the sidelines this year for LSU football? Every time Bo Pelini went to explain to one of his players what went wrong, uh, there was just bad body language from the players. Bad body language. Didn't look interested. Didn't look engaged. They were tuning Bo Pelini out. Yet I kept on hearing all season long from LSU fans, from people outside of LSU saying, well, the scheme is outdated. No, the 4-3 is bad. You can't run the 4-3 anymore. It's an outdated schematic. It's bad. No good. You should have stuck with the 3-4 like Dave Aranda. I saw former football players and former football coaches study LSU's film break it down frame by frame, says there's nothing wrong or even outdated about the schematics. The problem is the players just don't know what to do, and there seems to be a lack of communication. Translation, why should I listen to you if you don't listen to me? Why should I listen to you if you don't care about me? Why would anyone want to be treated that way by someone who who doesn't show any sort of affection towards them as a human being. It makes a whole lot of sense, doesn't it? Players are not getting softer. They're getting wiser. Coaches are not getting worse. They're just refusing to adapt. These hires that Coach O, that he's making... They're not about X's and O's anymore. They're not about schematics. People keep on complaining about how hiring coordinators who have never called plays before, you can't do that. Well, you can. It's a risk, but you can. But it's not about that. It's about culture. You adapt or you die. And one thing that I've always said about Coach O, no matter his mistakes, no matter his flaws, one thing that I've always said about why Coach O can succeed his ability to look at himself in the mirror and say, I need to change. In other words, I need to listen. And part of that change is hiring certain coaches that know how to coach the modern player. Thanks for listening to Out of My League. If you like what you heard, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or follow me on Twitter at the Nick Diaz.